I think we can all agree, a dramatic weekend for Russia. But has the situation settled now after the end of the rebellion by Wagner Group mercenaries? We're going to talk about it in Global Grid. And Leela Jacinto from our international affairs desk is joining me here on set. Leela, the two main protagonists in this latest uh, drama, I'm talking, of course, about the Wagner boss, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. How do you think they've actually emerged after the weekend's events? Well, let's look at Wagner boss, uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin, a dramatic fall from Greece. Publicly, no question about that. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's a nuance to what happened uh, over here. Now, the events of the weekend was directly triggered by an MOD, a Ministry of Defense directive, calling on all private military contractors, PMC, Wagner's just one of them, to join the Ministry of Defense and to become regular troops. So this is what triggered the, revo the revolt, because Yevgeny Prigozhin, without armed men under his direct control, would lose his impunity. And so he called for this revolt. The nuances here is that Yevgeny never really targeted Russian President Vladimir Putin. He targeted the top brass. And even when he marched on Moscow, he was careful to call it a march for justice. What this was was really a call, an attempt for uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin to side with, Prigo uh, with Prigozhin against these Russian uh, military brass. That didn't happen, of course. Putin called him a traitor. And now he is in exile in Belarus. So in a way, the traitor got amnesty. He saved his skin. He is in Belarus, uh, alive. Uh, but he's weakened uh, because, you know, one would imagine you know, he, uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin has supporters. There are people who believe that what he was saying about the Ukrainian invasion is correct. Uh, you know, that troops were uh, uh, lacked ammunition, that there's bad leadership. But he's not going to have ac the kind of access to social media like he did uh, when he was in Ukraine and Russia. Because if he's in Belarus, Belarusian President uh, Lukashenko runs a very tight ship. And he does what uh, President Putin wants. So he would be considerably weakened. He may not have access to all the channels of communication. And then there's also a question about his personal security. You know, uh, Putin's uh, detractors often meet their end in very violent ways. Uh, so, so for now, uh, he, this is a con considerably weakened man. When it comes to uh, Vladimir Putin, of course, as everybody, the consensus seems here seems to be that he's considerably weakened weakened, uh, you know, the internal fractures and frisions were on public display. But the fact is, in Russia today, there is no alternative to Vladimir Putin. And when Prigozhin put out his call for a revolt, what he was also doing was calling on the Russian elites in the security establishment to get on board with him. That did not happen. So Vladimir Putin may be weakened, but he's still the only man in town, and he's the only game in town. And what he does very effectively is crack down on dissent. So, uh, you know, a weakened leader is always a more dangerous leader. And I would say we're also going to have to watch how this goes. But, I mean, Putin is running a ship and running a military operation that has significant failures. And the top men who are conducting this uh, conflict are still in their jobs now. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see where um, these individuals uh, crop up again. No confirmation, of course, that Prigozhin's uh, in uh, Belarus, but it'll be interesting to see if we get images of him. We have seen images, according to Russian state television anyway, of the defence minister um, uh, appearing uh, on Russian television visiting Ukrainian uh, troops. I mean, what about those senior military uh, officials who came under that criticism in the first place? This is very interesting, yes. So among the two men that that, that Prigozhin kept targeting uh, and, you know, using very profane language was Defence Minister uh, Sergei Shogu, as well as the Chief of General Staff, General Valery Gerasimov. Uh, both these men have retained their position, and as you say, Shogu even putting in his appearance uh, today. But they are also considerably weakened. I mean, Putin could not possibly have, uh, you know, let go of these two men. That would have that would have shown him as weak uh, and really following Prigozhin's uh, what Prigozhin wanted uh, in the first place. But as 
this, you know, a lot of this also depends on how the Ukraine war carries on. You know, if it continues in this way, long dragging, m very many losses, there, there, you know, there are people, as I said, who 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 have taken on board what Prigozhin has said, uh, and they have taken on board his message that these two men are the ones who are responsible for the mess, not Vladimir Putin. So a lot of analysts think that they have their jobs for now, but it, sh it would be a couple of months before they would be fired or, you know, they, they really take the blame for what is happening on the battlefield if things go sour. Mm. And what about the Wagner Group? Where does it leave that? Weakened. There's no question about that. I mean, the Wagner Group was getting its funding primarily from the extraction industries in Africa, in Central African Republic, Sudan, and Mali, uh, mainly gold and diamonds. Now, if the Kremlin cuts off, uh, you know, their resources, uh, it's very unlikely that uh, any of the, the leadership in, in any of these countries will, will continue to have security contracts with the Wagner Group. That will be cut. And then what would be interesting is, especially in the Sahel, if French military troops are ready to go back into the region. So, I mean, such, so many things happen in 48 hours, and we're going to see the repercussions of this in the weeks to come.